How's it going everybody? So today I'm going to share my experience selling a car online through carsome.my where we were able to sell the car for 8,150 ringgit higher than what the used car dealer was offering us. So here's a little backstory of this car. It's not really my car, but it's a family member and he's expecting his third child. So a normal car seems to be a little small for his expanding family. He's getting an MPV. So the car that was being sold is a Volkswagen Golf, not the GTI, the regular 1.4 turbo with a DSG gearbox. It's fully paid off, no more astounding loans. So this car never really gave any serious problems to the owner. And overall, it's a fantastic car. It's great to drive and it's quite honestly such a waste to sell. If I had the money though, I would actually buy it from him, but I don't have the money. So here I am making this content. Okay, so if you wanna sell your car in Malaysia, traditionally there's only two options. So the first one is to sell your car at a used car dealer, which is actually the worst thing you can do because they're gonna offer you the lowest price ever. Uh, if you wanna buy a new car, and then you wanna trade in your old car for the new car, what they do is they would also sell that car to a used car dealer. So typically the, the trade-in price will be the same, very low. So the second option a lot of people do because they, they don't wanna get ripped off by the used car dealer is to uh, sell the car themselves online somehow. So typically what happens is people would take a bunch of photos of their car, uh, post it online on Facebook, on uh, mudah.my, on Carousel, and then hopefully somebody will contact them and then they'll negotiate a final price that they, they both would agree on. So once you do have a buyer, it's gonna be a little tedious because maybe the buyer, maybe they don't have the cash or they need to apply for their own loan. And even after that, um, before you transfer ownership from you to the new buyer, you have to bring your car inspected at Puspakom. And if your car has tinted windows, I think a lot of cars in Malaysia have tinted windows. You gotta take that out before you get it inspected. There's a lot of process involved which is quite tedious. So we obviously don't want to get ripped off by the car dealer. So option number one, that's kind of out. That's our last resort. Option number two, selling it online. Uh, I gotta be honest, none of us have the time or the patience to deal with people. So I was looking around, I was Googling online and I found these two companies called Carson.my and My2Car.my. So what caught my attention from these two companies is, is that it's solving two problems that we currently face. So the first one is that it potentially can sell our car for a higher price than what the used car dealer is offering. Number two, we don't have to deal with it, the end buyer. So I was quite intrigued. How it works is very simple. It's quite genius. So my 2 card and Carsum, they are two different companies, but they're essentially doing almost the exact same thing. So how it works is step number one, you contact them and get your car inspected at their place. So they're gonna inspect your car. So step number two, once they figure out the condition of your car, they're gonna offer you a direct buy price. So that means they're gonna offer you a price. If you were to sell it to them directly and get the money and get out of there. If you're not happy with that price, you can go to step number three, which is to list your car on their online bidding platform. So what happened here is, instead of bidding to the end buyer, it will actually post it online where, where used car dealers nationwide in Malaysia would bid amongst themselves to buy your car. So potentially, it will drive the price of your car up. Theoretically. Now, throughout this whole process, you don't have to pay a dime until you have a bidder and you agree on the price. And only then will you pay the processing fee, which is the same for both my two car and car so 500 ringgit. So it's a genius concept. I think it's a great power back to the people kind of internet solution. So I was all in. All right, the first order of business for me was to figure out what is my floor price? What is the absolute bottom of the barrel price that I should not go any lower? So to do that is very simple. We we just went to a new car showroom. At the time, it was a Mazda showroom, and we just said, hey, we are interested to get a new car. We want to trade in our old car. How much can we get out of the old car? And then he made a quick phone call and uh, came to us with a quotation of 45,000 ringgit. So that was the bottom price, the floor price that we should never go below. And then we went home, and I went online to take a look at how much are people selling the similar Volkswagen Golf for the similar year and specs that people are selling on Muda.my. And here's a list that I saw and the, it averages around to be about 57,000 ringgit, roughly around there is the listing price to the end user. Now it doesn't mean that it's gonna be sold for 57,000 because usually people would haggle a little bit and that kind of stuff. But if we sold our car to the used car dealer, how much are they getting a profit out of us for this car? They have 12,000 ringgit buffer for them to do whatever repairs that they need to do 
and a little bit of wiggle room for haggling and that's their profit. So it's about a 12,000 ringgit buffer which is a huge profit margin in my book. So this little price check that I did gave us two things. First, we know our floor price. So our floor price for our car was 45,000 ringgit. It should not go any lower than this. The listing price was about 57,000 ringgit. We obviously want to sell our car as close to that 57,000 as humanly possible. A realistic estimate that we're targeting for is that we want to sell our car between 50,000 to about 55,000 ringgit. So somewhere along those lines is what we aim for. So the next order of business, I called my two car and Carson to set up an appointment for them to inspect the car. So I started with my two car first. Unfortunately, their nearest branch was in Churras. I live in KL, so that's crossing borders. With the current COVID situation, I can't really drive out of KL. But my two car had a solution where they say that they can get their inspector to come over to my apartment. So the guy came over, pretty friendly guy. The whole thing took about, about 20 minutes around there. So the inspection was 90. 8% visual. He had a flashlight and a handed cell phone camera to take pictures of any imperfection. He didn't really test drove the car. I sat at a corner and I just let him do his thing and I noticed what he was looking for. Uh, number one, uh, he, he sat in the driver's seat and he checked the odometer to see the how many kilometers you, you ran the car. And then he took his flashlight to take a look inside the aircon vents. I'm not sure why he's doing that but maybe to check for mold or something. And then he opened up the hood of the car, uh, took the flashlight and started to look at the engine bay, all the nooks and crannies. Uh, that's where he spent most of the time. He didn't really look at the undercarriage of the car. And then he climbed up the back seat to check the condition of the cushions, the headliner. Then he went, went outside and inspected each and every part of the body panel to see if there's any dings or scratches. So the only test drove that he did, I parked my car at the side of the road. He went in, he drove the car to like the end of the road and then he just made a three point turn and then drove it back to where I was waiting. The whole thing is like, 30 seconds tops. So I'm not sure if that can be considered as a test drive. So after his inspection, like a day later, the my two car rep WhatsApp me and gave me a direct buy offer. Meaning if I were to sell it to them directly, they offered me about 46,000 ringgit. Now it's a bit disappointing because 46,000 ringgit is only 1,000 ringgit more than what I would get if I traded in at the used car dealer. So I wasn't too happy. They asked if I wanted to bid their car, but I declined because I want to compare my direct buy price with Carson. So that's what I did next. So I contacted Carson and this time around, I actually want to go to their branch, but and I don't want them to come over because I want to see how their branch looks like. The good news was that I live in KL and the nearest branch in KL for them was in Aeon AU, which is also within KL itself. But I did voice out, you know, I don't want to get caught in the police COVID roadblock. I don't want to get a summon, you know, for not staying at home. So they were kind enough to write me a MITI letter. So it's basically a letter if I were to to get caught in a roadblock and then the police asking me like what, what am I doing outside I can show them the letter so I think that's a, that's really good uh, customer service so I, I set up a date to go to Carson in Aeon AU so I was pleasantly surprised to see that the branch was very professional and modern I walked into my appointment uh, there's some rep that talked to me gave me a little bit of uh, intro how the whole thing works and then they brought my car downstairs to the car park area because that's where they did most of their inspection so the whole process of inspection between my two car and Carsem are very, very similar. They both are just using a flashlight with and taking pictures with their cell phones. But what I noticed about Carsem's inspection was that there were a minimum of two inspectors looking at the car at one time. And at some point there were up to four people taking a look at the car. So if you have something to hide, maybe, maybe that's something to consider. And my two car, the whole uh, inspection was about 20 minutes, but in Carsem, it was a lot longer. It was about 40 minutes. And Carsem, they actually test drove my car a little bit longer than how my two car did. They didn't really take my car outside. It was still in the parking lot, but they went at least three rounds. So after the inspection was done, the guy told me to, to go back upstairs. So I waited for him in the lounge area and he went into his office. He uploaded the pictures, made some phone calls to their network of a used car dealer. And then he came out, sat me down and said, okay, um, your car is in pretty good condition. This is our direct buy price, which is 45,000 ringgit. Again, I was disappointed because 45,000 ringgit was actually the same if I were to just trade it in at the used car dealer. And it's actually a thousand ringgit cheaper than what my Tuka was willing to pay us. And then the guy said, oh, but, but don't worry about it. Why don't you try our bidding system where you can maybe make a little bit more money? And at the time I thought, oh man, this whole thing is a gimmick. But there were a few things that he said that kind of convinced me on board because he said, oh, don't worry, we can get your car listed as early as tomorrow morning. 
and then the car is going to go on bid by noon and it's only going to take about an hour and a half for a session so if there's nobody bidding on your car we will relist it again on the same day and but we will reduce the listing price by about five to ten percent depending on the situation so throughout the whole process you don't really have to pay anything until you have a bidder and you confirm to selling your car at that price so before that it's risk-free for you so i said okay you know what, let's do this. And then he asked me like, what is the price that you want to list your car? I want the car to be sold between 50 to 55. I want to be realistic. So I said to him, okay, I want the car to be listed starting at 50,000 ringgit. And then we'll see from there. And he said, okay. So the next day, the guy set it up. They actually sent me an SMS with a link where I can click on that link and see my car being bidded live, which is pretty dope to see. Unfortunately, I forgot to check my SMS, so I totally missed the live bidding part. So I can't show you how it went down. But anyways, the bidding started at noon. Then on the same day at 8 p.m., the guy called me to tell me that not only they got me a successful bid, but they got the highest bid of 53,400 ringgit. So to me, I'm like, whoa, that's that's right in the ballpark where we want to sell this car. So we were pleasantly surprised. I gave the owner of the car a quick call. He agreed to the price. And then we said, all right, we agree to the price. What do we have to do next? And then the guy said, all right, great. If you bring in the car within two days, you only have to pay the processing fee of 250 instead of 500. But if you bring your car later than two days, it will be 500. So we sent the car in the, the very next day. And here's what we have to bring. You have to bring the original grant. You have to bring the two set of keys the actual person whose name is on the grant has to physically show up because they need to do the thumbprint verification and then the owner's original IC is also needed so you need these four things I set up an appointment the next day at 4 p.m. in Karsem Ampang and then they brought the owner into a room where they had to do some sort of paperwork and then the, the thumbprint verification with their IC and then that whole process takes about 30 to 40 minutes around there so we got everything done around 4:45. We went home and then the owner told me by 5.07, he showed me a screenshot that he got the money delivered to his to his bank account. So that's 53,400 ringgit minus the 250 transaction fee delivered to his bank account at 5.07. That's literally a few minutes right after we left the car sum after all the paperwork was done. We haven't even arrived home yet, but we already received the money. So we were just blown away by the whole process. So we were all very, very happy. So here's a summary of all the events that happened here. So if we were to take a look at similar cars being sold to the end buyer on muda.my, the average selling price is about 57,000 ringgit. If you want to buy a new car where we traded in our old car, they would only offer us 45,000 ringgit. Now, when we went to Carson, so they gave us a direct buy price and that was also 45,000 ringgit, the same amount as what the used car dealer was offering us. The direct sell price to my two car was 46,000 ringgit, which is only 1,000 ringgit more than the used car dealer and also Carson direct buy. I did not do bidding on my two car because I agreed to the bidding on, on Carson and I feel like it's the same thing anyways. And I was already happy with the Carson bidding price that we won and we accepted a bidding offer of 53,400. The fee that we paid the Carson to deal with all this was only 250 because we handed in the car within two days. So the money that we saved selling our car at Carson versus trading it in at the used car dealer was 8,150 ringgit. Really, really good. We were all very, very happy. So there you go. That's my experience selling a car on Carson. Uh, to me, it is the way to sell your car in Malaysia. It solves all of the problems that I fear. Number one, I'm not getting ripped off by the used car dealers. Number two, I don't have to deal with selling the car with the end buyer. I, I just don't have the time to deal with that. And number three, so the moment I got the car in for bidding to the moment I handed in the car and getting paid was only two days. Absolutely nuts unheard of so i highly recommend you to check these two companies out i don't think it would make any difference between my two car or carson they're doing exactly the same thing they the both of their transaction fees are 500 however at the time carson was running a promotion where their transaction fee was 250 instead of 500 if you brought your car in within two days of you accepting a bidding price all right so i'm gonna leave the link in the description for both my two car and carson so i hope this has been helpful see ya